Chapter Two, Part Two of the Lives of the Three Mrs. Judsons by Arabella M. Wilson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Two, Conversion, Bias Toward a Missionary Life, Acquaintance with Mister Boardman. Amiable as she was, and conscientious in a degree not usual, Sarah knew that yet one thing she lacked and this knowledge often disquieted her but her first deep and decided convictions of sin seem to have been produced about the year of eighteen twenty under the preaching of mr cornelius her struggles of mind were fearful and she sunk almost to the verge of despair but hoped on at last and she was enabled to consecrate her whole being to the service of her maker she soon after united with the first baptist church in salem under the care of dr boyles the missionary spirit was early developed in her heart even before her conversion her mind was often exercised with sentiments of commiseration for the situation of ignorant heathen and idolaters and after that event it was the leading idea of her life the cause of this early bias is unknown but it was shown in her conversations her letters and notes to friends and in her early poetical effusions she even tremblingly investigated her own fitness to become a vessel of mercy to the far-off perishing heathen and then shrinking from what seemed to her the presumptuous thought she gave herself with new zeal to the work of benefiting these immediately around her shortly after her conversion says her brother she observed the destitute condition of the children in the neighborhood in which she resided with the assistance of some young friends as teachers she organized and continued through the favorable portions of the year sunday school of which she assumed the responsibility of superintendent and at the usual annual celebrations she and her teachers and scholars joined in the exercises which accompanied that festival it is my ardent desire she writes to a friend that the glorious work of reformation may extend till every knee shall bow to the living god for this expected this promised era let us pray earnestly unceasingly and with faith how can i be so inactive when i know that thousands are perishing in this land of grace and millions in other lands are at this very moment kneeling before senseless idols and in her journal sinners perishing all around me and i almost panting to tell the far heathen of christ surely this is wrong i will no longer indulge the vain foolish wish but endeavor to be useful in the position where providence has placed me I can pray for deluded idolaters and for those who labor among them and this is a privilege indeed this strong bias of her own mind toward a missionary life was well known to her mother who still remembers with a tender interest an incident connected with it sarah had been deeply affected by the death of coleman who in the midst of his labors among the heathen had suddenly been called to his reward some time afterward she returned from an evening meeting and with a countenance radiant with joy announced what her pastor had mentioned in the meeting that a successor to coleman had been found a young man in maine named boardman had determined to raise and bear to pagan burma the standard which had fallen from his dying hand with that maternal instinct which sometimes forebodes a future calamity however improbable her mother turned away from her daughter's joyous face for the thought flashed involuntarily through her mind that the young missionary would seek as a companion of his toils a kindred spirit and where would he find one so congenial as the lovely being before her her fears were realized some line written by the enthusiastic sarah on the death of coleman met the eye of the young man in maine who
who was touched and interested by the spirit which breathes in them and did not rest till he had formed an acquaintance with their author the acquaintance was followed by an engagement and in about two years sarah's ardent aspirations were gratified she was a missionary to the heathen but we were anticipating events and will close this chapter with extracts from the lines of the death of coleman of which we have spoken tis the voice of deep sorrow from india's shore the flower of our church is withered is dead the gem that shone brightly will sparkle no more and the tears of the christian profusely are shed two youths of columbia with hearts glowing warm embarked on the billows far distant to rove to bear to the nations all wrapped in thick gloom the lamp of the gospel the message of love but wheelock now slumbers beneath the cold wave and coleman lies low in the dark cheerless grave mourn daughters of india mourn the rays of that star clear and bright that so sweetly on arakan shore are shrouded in black clouds of night for coleman is gone o coleman thy father weeps not o'er the grave thy heart riven mother never sighs over thy dust but the long indian grass over thy far tomb shall wave and the drops of the evening descend on the just cold silent and dark is thy narrow abode but not long wilt thou sleep in that dwelling of gloom for soon shall be heard the great trump of our god to summon all nations to hear their last doom a garland of amaranth shall be thine and thy name on martyrs bright register shine o oh, what glory will burst on thy view when we are placed by the judge of the earth the flowers that in india grew by thy care in never pale wreath encircling thy brow End of chapter 2